guys! With all the new videos coming out, especially with Halloween coming up, I wanted to go ahead and film a couple videos giving you guys some more background information. So for this video, I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you some of the stuff that I use in my transformations and some of the more advanced stuff that's going to be coming up here over the next couple of weeks as far as like prosthetic making and attaching prosthetics and working with things like that. Today I kind of want to go over what I have in my kit and what I think is really good to have a kind of necessity if you're trying to do multiple advanced things. Like if you're trying to do them on other people, if you're trying to do this on a regular basis, you know, there's certain things that I feel like you should have in your kit. And then there's also going to be the side that I think if you're just kind of having fun with it, there's less expensive routes, but I still feel like are essential to have to where you can do multiple things with them without breaking the bank, especially if you're just new to this and you're starting it out. Now this is something that anyone can do and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you today, I use them in my videos on purpose because they're things that are easy to obtain for people and really inexpensive if they wanted to start dabbling in it. Now you don't have to be an amazing artist to even do this. Most of us aren't and we especially didn't start that way. You know, there are people that are artistically inclined, of course, that seem to have natural ability and things seem to come to them a lot more easily and they're just able to do some crazy cool things, but even they develop better abilities over time. So if this is something that you enjoy doing or you're interested in doing it, then just do it. You know, you don't have to spend a ton of money on it to start and there's nothing that should be holding you back but you, really. You know, no one starts out amazing. Everyone gets better with time and you can't get better unless you actually do it and you practice. So if it's something you enjoy, go for it. There's nobody that's gonna be perfect at it from the beginning. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, you know, welcome. Thank you so much for checking it out. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I guess hit the notification bell YouTube's kind of iffy on whether that's an essential thing or not. Sometimes it is, sometimes people don't get information anyways. So whatever 20 step process it's having you do, go ahead and do it. Or, you know, just come back and check it out. <laughs> Either way, we appreciate you being here. So one of the main things that I use in my transformations, and I try to stick with these a lot, is I like to use Mayron, their cream makeups. The reason I like these is these are super, super inexpensive. You guys said so this little tube can go a very long way. They come in all sorts of colors. They even have, you know, like golds and silvers and metallic finishes. And what's great about this is there's a variety of colors. You can get all of your primary and all of your secondary colors. Now, if you don't know what a primary color is and a secondary color is, you can look it up. But basically your primaries are gonna be where you see your red, yellows, and blues. Your secondaries are gonna be your greens, your purples, your oranges, where it's taking two primary colors and mixing them together. So if you basically get the rainbow of colors and a couple metallics and some whites and blacks, you're covered on anything, guys, because you can use white to lighten any color. You can use black to darken any color. I know this is some really intense information. But these, you can actually get at majority of local party stores, um, especially around Halloween time, things like that. But if you have a, a store that's really popular, that I know is in a lot of places, Searchers, the, where they have Halloween stuff year round, they have these for about $2.50 for each color. And you guys, a little bit of this goes a long way. Now these wash off very easily. I've never had any of them stain anything on my body. So these are really great. And this is why I actually use these in a ton of my videos. These in combination with eyeshadow colors because you can do a lot of shading and detailing with those. But these are great for your main bases. They're really easy to mix. These dry really well and they stay on. Now if you're going somewhere where you're going to be out in the rain or you're going to be sweating a lot, these do come off with water. They do try to resist quite a bit. Trust me, my shower knows this but it's, you know, it's still gonna last you pretty well. So this is a really good investment where you can get all the colors super inexpensively and not have to spend a ton of money to start out with. Two of the things that I personally think are essential if you're gonna be doing a lot of black lines or white areas, uh, two of my favorite things that I have are actually by Ben Nye. I have two of their Magic Cakes. Now these are water activated. They are super high pigment they go on you can make them really watery and still be able to draw beautiful lines dots details on top of things and they're not going to mix with them 
Um, and as I said, these are water activated, so they're super easy to use and you can change up the thickness of the paint. So if you want something that's super inky and will flow well for little tiny line details, you can just add more water. If you want something thicker, like you're trying to get a very solid foundation going, these work so, so well. These are a little bit more expensive. I got these locally, so I was kind of lucky I didn't have to pay a shipping fee. I paid $12 for each of these, but you guys, I've been using these forever. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I've been using this forever and you can see like it's barely dented in. Like this is a pretty thick product and it is, I feel like if you're looking for something that's gonna last you a long time, that's gonna work really well, especially in conjunction with the others, this is a wonderful, wonderful, highly pigmented product. Another thing that I've had forever where this is a little bit more, as far as we're still in the paint category, this is a little bit more expensive, but I incorporate it quite often. I try to use the Mayron as much as possible just to make it easier for you guys, but you guys, this has lasted me forever. This is actually the Aqua Color Makeup Palette by Cryolon. You can get this on their website. This is the 24 color palette. Mine's a mess, guys. So they come where you have a tray of colors and there's actually a second tray below. So there is a ton of colors in here, you guys. And these are also water activated, super pigmented. A little bit goes a long way. I've been using these forever. Um, if you follow any of the pictures on like my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll see that I've used like this teal and stuff quite a bit. And I've covered to my waist in this multiple times and it's barely dented the surface of it. There are metallics in here that are really nice. A lot of these where you see my gold detailing in videos is I'm actually using this. Um, this I think is definitely a pricier investment. I think I paid, I wanna say around the $85 range when I got this, but I've also had it for three years, you guys. Like this just, it lasts so long and goes so far. So if you're doing something more on a professional level or you wanna do Halloween makeup for people on a regular basis, or you just really want something that's gonna last you a very long time and just be a wonderful product, this is gonna be one of your go-tos. It comes with so many different colors in here. You can mix things to make different things that you need. You can blend colors really well. I used this entirely on my, uh, the lizard kind of, yellow and pink transformation that had the black lines and detailing on it. That was what I used on this for that body paint. You can see that I was able to blend those colors really well. And what's nice is because they're water activated, you can get your brush a little bit more damp and be able to blend those colors still. They're still workable even if they've already dried on you. It doesn't flake off. This stays on so well. So even if you're sweating, this is gonna stay on a lot better. Obviously, it's still water permeable, but it's going to last you so, so long, guys. You guys, this is really worth the investment, I feel. If not, you can stick with these. Now, there are other types of paint out there. If you're looking, it depends on the kind of effect that you're looking for. There are alcohol activated paints where they come in palettes, and you guys, they are stunning. They're essential if you're gonna do things like veining, if you're gonna do things like bruise lines or decayed flush or anything like that you're probably gonna want those alcohol paints. You can create that effect with these, but those make it to where it looks like it's below the skin. And you guys, those are gonna stay on you. Now you have to use one of the highest percentages of alcohol out there, so sometimes it's really hard to get, uh, but you can find it online. I personally don't use it just because I've never needed it in any of my looks because it's more effective in person in my opinion, but it's one of those where if you're looking for the top of the top, you can absolutely invest in one of those and you will be so happy with that investment. A person that does a really good review on it is if you look up Made You Look, they do a really good in-depth video of the different types of makeup and kind of show you what's essential for each type. So that can kind of help sway your opinion as well. I don't really go for any body paints that aren't really water activated or pre-mixed. That cream body paint is one that I use, like you've seen with the Mayron. I don't go for like grease paints. Um, they do have a time and a place. They're beautiful coverage. They can stain, or at least the ones I've used can, but I just feel like I don't like the consistency. They're really beautiful for blending and things like that, but they're not a favorite of mine. So another thing that I think is really essential is what you use for your shading. Now for me, I use eyeshadows because they are so easily accessible. They come in so many different colors. They come in shimmers, they come in glitters, they come in mattes. For me, I think if you're going to start this, I think if you at least have the set of your basic colors with those cream paints for Mayron, you can get that really inexpensively. Another really inexpensive place that has a high quality product for me personally is BH Cosmetics. They have so many things to order 
that comes in just so many colors and varieties. So it's one of my go-to companies as far as eyeshadows and palettes and things like that. And the one that I use pretty much all the time that you've seen in almost every single video is I actually use this one, is the, this is a 28 color and this is their mattes eyeshadow. You guys, this has lasted me forever and I think I paid like 15 bucks for it or less and they constantly have sales. So if it's not something that you need right away, definitely keep an eye on the site because they've always got some kind of deal going on. But you guys, this has such a range of colors. I usually use these for my contouring. I use a lot of the black mat for my shadowing. These pigments, you can layer them and they are super, super pigmented. You guys, like this is a company worth checking out. I've been using these all over my body and these, again, barely denting them. And this is really, really good, especially if you're trying to get those deep colors and especially on camera, mattes can super, super help. What I do have from them as well is I invested, and I think I got this for like $12 at the time, um, in their Take Me Back to Brazil palette because it has a lot of really vibrant colors in it that are shimmers. And you guys, these are so pigmented. Like this is such an awesome investment. With the two of these and those set of cream colors, you can pretty much do anything. There's really nothing that's gonna hold you back because there's so many color options. And I actually, of course, after I ordered this, I stumbled across this in person at Ulta. So these are things that you can actually pick up in person as well. They do carry some BH Cosmetics in there. Now you're gonna be seeing on this channel going forward, there's going to be prosthetic making. There's gonna be advanced versions down the road with molds and things like that. But again, the whole point of this channel is try to make things easy that you guys can follow along with as well. So I do have my personal face cast. These are never flattering, you guys. Like you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, do I look like that? But I do have my personal replica of my face that we are gonna be doing prosthetics and things on for smaller things. Um, We'll get more into that later and I will show you a video on how you can make these. And you guys, before I show that video, you're gonna find a ton of videos online that tell you to do the bandages that are for like casts and plaster molds and stuff of your face. Please do not do it. Just don't. You can get super burned by it. There's so many things that can get wrong, especially if you're doing it by yourself. You could easily cover your airways. These are not always easy to get off of your face. Always do it with someone else and do not do the bandages. I will show you the appropriate way to do it. There are appropriate videos on there that can show you how, and I'm actually going to have, um, I'm getting my full bust done as well. And I'm going to be doing that in California later this year, um, with a group of people and we'll film that and show you how as well, because we want you to do it safely, but we are going to be showing you easy ways to make prosthetics and things for your face because we do want that for Halloween and just general you know playing around and things like that. One of the things that I use in it personally, liquid latex, I do have a couple brands. I don't really have a preference between Ben Nye and Cryolan. There that and Mayron, those are like my three main go-tos with BH Cosmetics as well, of course. Um, those are pretty much all the brands that I use for the most part. So you know just whatever is a better deal for you at the time. Now you guys, with liquid latex, you're going to want to make sure you are not allergic to it. There's a lot of people that have sensitivities to it and they don't know it until they've glued something on their face and then they get a rash or hives or something way worse. So always do a patch test to make sure. Luckily, I don't have an issue with gluing things on my body with latex. So often you'll see me use latex. A lot of times if I'm doing little crystals and things like that, I actually use eyelash adhesive. And that's a great alternative if you have very lightweight things that you want to glue on. But you guys, there's a lot of eyelash adhesive companies out there that are just not very transparent and they don't really disclose the products and materials that are in their eyelash adhesive. So you're gonna have to do some research and just probably some testing to make sure that they don't contain latex as well because quite often they actually might. A really good alternative to is Prosade. If you've never heard of Prosade, research into it. It's like the go-to for the community for gluing prosthetics on your face. It's so amazing. Um, for Prosade as well as latex, you're going to need a remover to take it off. People love to just peel it off and stuff, but you can't actually do damage if it gets stuck in an area or it's covering a larger area. You don't want to just be pulling, especially if it's skin on your face. So you will have to have a remover with that, but it's a great investment. A little bit goes a long way. And the Prosade is actually 
medical grade and so it's kind of the top of the top for the prosthetic community because you're less likely to have a reaction to it and it's a lot safer to use. So that's a good investment too. So if you can't do latex, do that. The prosthetics that you're going to see coming up on my channel are actually going to be a combination of latex and flour and I actually learned this from another YouTuber who is amazing with prosthetics guys. So I'm going to link down below their page because they're totally awesome. Another good investment is brushes. Now, <laughs> before I show you this, please don't judge me. <laughs> I have collections of brushes from just either craft stores or makeup places and stuff. And I have collections from just over the years where I have been, here's my set that I haven't cleaned yet, that I haven't, you know, these are all from sets and stuff that I've used over time. Like when I upgrade my makeup brushes for my personal use, my old ones are going into this because usually they're still usable. I do use an old beauty blender. Um, there are times where I do still use these cheap, just drop in tools, cheap little makeup sponges. You guys, a little bit goes a long way for these too because these are so super inexpensive. These are great for applying latex and all sorts of other things and they're so inexpensive that you don't mind disposing of them. I do have things like uh, palette knives, tweezers, little scissors, things like that. I feel like, you know, the brushes are more on like personal preference and a little bit goes a long way. So, but one of the things that I actually just started using recently is I'm gonna try to find this for you guys on Amazon. My mother actually got this for me like a Christmas or two ago, I think it was last Christmas, and it came with so many brushes, you guys that most of them I have not even touched yet, but a lot of these are actually what I have been using. And so eventually I'm gonna end up just using just this, but I think this was like 10, $15 for all of these. So if you're looking for a wide variety of brushes, I think this is a really great starter set and I think this could really serve you well. So I'll try to find that link for Amazon and link that down below for you as well. So you're still looking at, you can get majority of this stuff as far as the range of the Mayron colors, the eyeshadow palettes, the brushes even, and liquid latex and the little sponges and things like that and not even break 50 bucks at this point still. You'll notice in a lot of my videos when I am doing the uh, painting my body and stuff, I actually do start off with a base of foundation and I set it with powder. And the reason I do that is I just feel like it, especially when you're using whites and things, it gives something for that makeup to adhere to. And I feel like, especially when I'm trying to set it quickly, it is able to absorb into that powder. This is a personal preference. Um, I know a couple other YouTubers and makeup artists that do this as well. It, I just feel like for me personally, it goes on better and stays on better. And it's just easier for me to work with, especially when I'm using shadows and stuff and blending them onto the skin because then they're not mixing with the oils on your skin. So I feel like that really helps. A lot of the powders that I use, I do have like the Ben Nye, the Fair, the banana powders. Um, I do have Ben Nye, the super white when you're trying to be all sealed and white. So that super helps, I feel. I'm gonna try to show this drawer. Unless then I'll show it upside down. So you see, I always have a collection of glitters and eyelashes and just like different crystals and things to like glue onto yourself and enhance things. Just make sure that you're using stuff that's not going to get into your pores or your eyes or something crazy and scary and you're doing something dangerous. Just check out the stuff that you use. You'll see, I always keep tissue paper and stuff for like texture effects and things like that. I do have some stencils, which I've yet to play with, but you know, those are a lot more effective with, I feel like, um, an airbrush machine, but I do have stuff like nose and scar wax, which is really, really good for when you want to build up a wound and you want to have a split in it. A lot of this is going to be coming up for uh, Halloween. Scab blood is one of those things for if you're going to be doing gory effects, this builds up in wounds really well. It kind of makes it chunkier and it stays in place a lot better and it's nice and deep toned. So I like to have a collection of that on me all the time. And then I have uh, stage blood for more of the running and the dripping. And you guys, this can be really sticky. So there are uh, versions that you can make online as well. There's a lot of people that can tell you how to do that too, if you want to you know, do it as opposed to investing in it. But I also have something cool. So this is called collodion. So collodion is really, really good uh, for scar effects. Smells exactly like 
nail polish, you guys, like really strong, clear nail polish. They used this in incorporation with raised up areas in the Joker smile effect. So if you paint a line, you let it dry, you paint over that same line a couple of times, what it does is it actually tightens and shrinks. So it pulls inward. And so what it does is it causes the skin and area to indent and it creates really cool effects. So this is something that you need a remover for as well. This is not an essential item, guys. You can create this with shadowing effects and stuff too, but this is just something really fun that I have in my collection. Some of the weirder stuff I have in my collection is I do have a collection of prosthetics that I have purchased to play within the store. And then I have some weird stuff like, you guys, I was really excited when I ordered my set of teeth. And the reason I have these is I actually have um, plastic beads that are heat activated in warm water and then they become really pliable and you can mold them into whatever shape so you can actually make teeth and things like that and those are going to be in videos coming up as well so I'll show you how to use these in a later video and of course I just have some generic like random prosthetic pieces and just fun stuff all in a drawer and old things that I've made and stuff because you know those are fun to play with too they don't always fit your face very well but there's times that you can actually you know mess with them and make them work sometimes a little bit better so we'll cover that in a video in the future as well so that's some of the stuff that I have in the kit those are some of the things that I think that are really just useful last a long time can go a long way I do really like uh, mixing bowls from like painting palettes and stuff like that when you're gonna be working with these colors because you guys because this can get really messy I do have like a whole drawer set up that I keep everything in there's so much more of just crafting stuff that I have kind of all over the place you can ask my roommates they can attest to that but yeah that's kind of the essentials of it. I think what you should have in a kit what you could have in a kit uh, there are more advanced things. Made You Look goes over a lot of stuff that you can have. Glam and Gore is another great one. She does a very in-depth video of advanced things that you can have in your kit and like kind of the essentials to start with as well. But this is what I have in my kit. This is the stuff that I use on a regular basis and stuff that you're gonna see coming forward, coming up, forward, moving forward. I know how to speak, I swear. Now that I've rambled on forever, thank you guys so much for sticking around. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for constantly being on my channel and being so encouraging and making it feel good to actually come back and get back into this. So if you have any questions or anything or further suggestions on what you'd like to see or what you'd like to know, feel free to comment below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, I know you don't have to, I personally fall down the rabbit hole of YouTube. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch mine. I'm always so, so grateful.